have experienced such great forgiveness. How many people in here has ever asked God for forgiveness? <clears throat> Every one of us. How many people has God forgiven? Every one of us. Yet we can't do the same thing for those that we come in contact with in this life. Amen? Listen to this. The title of this morning's message is you look just like your daddy. I'm sorry, you act just like your daddy. <laughs> hey, Brother Billy, that's a strange title for a message. Yeah, but let's see what Jesus had to say. You see, we're no longer supposed to be children of wrath and disobedience, but children of God. Someone made a statement about me one time. I was going to visit her. I was young at the time. And as I walked up the hill before I got to where she lived, she said she looked out, and it was an older lady, she said she looked out the window and she saw me come and she knew it was me because I walked like my daddy used to walk. Let that sink in for a minute. I wonder how many people, when they see us coming, or whenever they come in contact with us, or whenever they, whenever they interact with our lives, Brother Sleece, walk away thinking, well, I know who their daddy is. Oh, amen. I ain't talking about your natural daddy. I'm talking about your heavenly father. How many times has someone looked at you in your life and thought, they're a child of God? Amen. I see these two different daddies. And sometimes people have trouble figuring out which one you belong to. Amen? Oh, that's good preaching right there. Jesus said in John 8 and 12, it says, Then Jesus spake unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Did you hear that? He said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you will have that light. Once we accept Jesus Christ and become children of God, born again, then that light dwells in these earthen vessels. Matthew 5 and 13. Say, prove that, Brother Billy. I think I will. Matthew 5 and 13. He says, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden underfoot of men. That's Matthew 5 and 13. Let's read on. He says, You are the light of the world. Who's he talking to? You. Amen. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Did you hear that? Not just to the house, but to all of those that are around. To all of those that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. Now listen to this. Let your light so shine before men. How? Walk around with a flashlight? No, that ain't what he's talking about. That they may see your good works. Now that word works there, in the Greek, it means labor, it means your doing, and it means your actions. Did you hear that? It means your actions. Let other people see the light that's in you by your actions and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Oh, me. How many times has your actions Cause people to say, I know who your daddy is. You ever heard somebody tell their little kid, it's usually the mama saying this, you act just like your daddy. Amen. Oh, I wish they could say that about us and our relationship with our father today. Amen. You act just like your daddy. You walk just like your daddy. You talk just like your daddy. My Lord, help us today to let that light that is in us shine before men. And I'm not talking about taking your Bible and running up to everybody you meet and say, you got to be born again. you got to be saved. Quit sinning, quit chewing, quit, quit dipping, quit smoking, quit drinking, quit cussing. Nothing wrong with preaching those things whenever the Spirit of the Lord gets on you and gives you the unction, but 
the way you interact with people, the most influence that you have with them ain't going to be in your talk. It's going to be in your walk. The way that they see you react to situations in your life. The way that they see you treat others. Oh, I know that hurts. The way that they see us treat other people. Do they find us forgiving others? Because we go around proclaiming, I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven. Well, then why can't we forgive other people? You remember what the example Jesus used? The man that found his servant that owed him over a trillion dollars and his servant fell down, begged for mercy, and the king forgave him and said, you're set free. This same man that had been forgiven of so much goes out and finds a man that owes him 15 bucks and says, pay me and pay me now. And that servant falls down and begs him for mercy. And you know what he gives him? None. He gives him no mercy. Has him thrown in prison. Uh, and then Jesus goes on to teach us that we are to forgive people as we have been forgiven. But Brother Billy, I can't forgive them. Well, then you're going to have a hard road to hold because you have to forgive them. You have to forgive them. If you don't, it's going to mess your relationship up with the Lord. And I don't know about you. There ain't nobody in this life that's ever done anything to me or anything to mine that is worth me missing heaven over. Amen. It's time that we brought ourself. And listen, if you feel like you just can't do it, start praying and say, God, help me. Help me to forgive that person. I don't want to hate them. I don't want to feel this way about them. Help me to forgive them. Help me to forgive so that others, when they see me forgive, will not see me, but they will see you in my actions. And I can let my light shine before men. And then my Father will be glorified in heaven. And then they will know, oh, I know who your daddy is. Amen. I've heard people just walk up because of the resemblance and say, I can tell by looking who your daddy is. Oh, I want that in my life. Amen. I want somebody to be able to tell who my daddy is. Even if I ain't got on my Jesus hat, I ain't got on my Jesus shirt, I ain't got on my Jesus license plate, they can look and say, oh, I know who your daddy is. There's something different about you. I can tell you ain't the same as others I come in contact with. Amen. Oh, my goodness. And they'll look at you and it'll be as if they have seen the face of God. Because they saw in you something they can't understand. It must be God. It has to be something real. Because I saw, I know what those people did to them, yet they forgave them. We talked about the centurion soldier that stood by the cross. And went, listen, he had heard Jesus preach. He had heard the disciples proclaim it probably. He had heard all of these things. But what really changed his mind is when he stood by the cross and he looked up and he saw this man that had been spit on, that had been beaten, that had been whipped. He saw this man who should have, in the carnal way of thinking, in our old wrath nature, should have looked down and said, Father, kill them, destroy them, bring them, bring fire down on their heads. But instead, he looks down on these people that were a mess and that hated him, that were calling him all these names and spitting on him. He said, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. And this centurion, this old hard-hearted soldier that stood by looking up, heard him cry and saw the things that were done. And he said, surely, as conviction gripped his heart and his soul, he said, surely, this was the Son of God. Hallelujah. Why? Because he saw God in action through Jesus Christ. Why did Jacob see the face of God? Because he saw God in action through Esau. Amen. Through the forgiveness that Esau had. Who's your daddy? That used to be something that they say to, said a lot. Amen. Who's your daddy? My goodness. I hope you know this morning who your daddy is. And it goes far beyond the outward appearance we're talking about the ways of the heart right now. Amen. If it was good enough, if it was good enough for the outward appearance to be enough, and that's we find a group of people that Jesus calls hypocrites simply because the fact that they looked good on the outside. They looked on the outside what man would consider righteous. But he told them their daddy was the devil. Why? Because of their actions. Listen to what he says to them. Let me find our scripture. 
And he answered and said unto him, I'm in John the 8th chapter. John the 8th chapter, 39th verse. And he's having a debate with these religious guys. They answered and said unto him, John 8 and 39, Abraham is our father. And Jesus said unto them, If you were, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. I submit to you today, if you're God's children, you're going to find yourself doing the works of God. Amen? He says, But now you seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. I Meaning Abraham would not have done this. Ye do the deeds of your father. Now listen. He's talking to these religious, hypocritical, pious men. You do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, We be not born in, fornic in fornication. We have one father, even God. See, they still ain't getting it. He's fixing to make it real plain. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, you would love me. Oh, oh my goodness. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but He sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. Now here He's fixing to rub salt in the wound. John 8 and 44. Ye are of your father, the devil. And the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there, there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Did you hear that? After your conversion, there should be no doubt who your daddy is. People shouldn't scratch their head and well, I just wonder if he really got it. I wonder if he was born... Listen, there wasn't nobody that knew Saul of Tarsus. There wasn't nobody after his experience on the road to Damascus and he got up and went into the city and got his sight back and began to preach. Nobody said, well, I wonder if Paul is really who he thinks. You know, I wonder if he's really changed any. This man went from being a murderer of the church. And why? We talked about last week, he had saw something in Stephen. He had saw Stephen's face after he'd been stoned and gnashed upon by their teeth. And he said, lay not this sin to their charge. And this had haunted him. And it had, it had, it had convicted his soul and he had kicked against the Spirit of God till finally he gave in on the road to Damascus. And when he got up, old things had passed away and all things became new because he had a new daddy and he wasn't serving the, his old father anymore. Amen. He became born. Born again. Born again. Who's your daddy? Amen. You act just like your daddy. Oh, I wish they'd say that about us. Amen. Problem is, we have so much trouble winning some of them. <laughs> it's because we act like our old daddy. We act like the Pharisees acted so many times. They showed more works of the of the devil than they did of God. Jesus said in Luke 6 and 44 that every tree is known by his own fruit. Did you hear that? You are known by the fruit that you bear. And I know that we like to say, well, I can tell they ain't saved. They're wearing breeches. Talk about women. I know that man there ain't saved. He's wearing a pair of shorts. I know he ain't saved. I saw him out the other day not wearing no shirt and wearing his shorts mowing his yard. I know he ain't saved. I know they ain't saved by the way they dress because Jesus said you'd know him by the fruit. That ain't what he's talking about. You'll never hear me say that it don't matter what you wear 